in lockdown, the galleries are all shut, but that doesn't mean that we can't have an art adventure. So what we're going to do each week is we're going to take a look at the creativity of a range of different British artists, from William Hogarth through to Holman Hunt, and many more in between. What will happen is I'm going to provide a brief overview to the artists, their career, their life, and then we're going to take a look uh, more specifically at one particular artwork. So this week we're going to kick off with William Hogarth and I'm going to pay particular attention to a very revealing self-portrait that he created, but a little bit more of that later on. But first, a bit about the life of the artist. William Hogarth lived from the 10th of November 1697 until the 26th of October 1764. He was a painter and a printmaker and he was renowned for his satirical wit and his skills of observation. Hogarth's work illustrated some of the darker aspects of Georgian England, but he did so with humour and a strong sense of narrative drama. Before becoming a professional artist, Hogarth pursued different forms of creative training, which included an apprenticeship with the engraver Gamble in Leicester Fields. This helped him to enhance his printmaking skills, which would become vital later in his career. Hogarth also studied painting at the Academy of Sir Thornhill. Painting and printmaking were the mediums that Hogarth excelled at. And the experiences with Gamble and Thornhill would have a big effect upon the direction of Hogarth's life, especially as Hogarth would go on to marry Thornhill's daughter Jane. Hogarth is probably most famous for his modern moral stories, as they were known. They were extremely popular at the time, and their appeal continues to endure due to their ability to entertain and enthrall viewers. William Hogarth was a great storyteller, and he used sequential art to illustrate his narratives. A Harlot's Progress, A Rake's Progress, and Marriage a la Mode all used this device of many different stages to tell a story. All of these offered the viewer a chance to see a story played out, but not through different acts upon a theatre stage, but on different canvases and detailed engravings. In these works, Hogarth fills the scene with multiple figures. Some of them, such as Sarah in A Rake's Progress, are honest and kind, but the majority, such as Thomas Rakewell himself, are definitely not. The use of satire, wit and great draftsmanship help to bring the characters and the stories alive. But how did Hogarth portray himself? Well, we're now going to explore one of his revealing self-portraits. The painter and his pug. It was created in 1745 and it was purchased by the Tate in 1824. The oil painting shows the artist and his favourite pet, his dog called Trump. No. Not that Trump. This Trump. Trump was the beloved dog of Mr and Mrs Hogarth and is the pivotal figure in this image. If we look closely, we will notice that Hogarth has not depicted himself sat side by side with his dog. It's not a straightforward portrait of one man with his dog. Instead, Trump the pug is sat in front of a canvas of his owner, not the owner himself. It's a fascinating composition. So why is this important? Well, it's clearly a deliberate decision on Hogarth's part to stage the scene in such a manner. Art history is filled with paintings within paintings and they carry their symbolism depending on what is framed within the frame. We could see this as Hogarth's attempts to depict the pug as more real and more vibrant than he perceives himself to be. It could also be that the pug is there to symbolise the outer energy of the artist himself. The term pug could certainly be a play on the words for William Hogarth's pugnacious character, and in many ways his beloved pugs did seem to be an alter ego for him, appearing in a wide range of his artworks to create mischief and humour wherever they went. Pugs are everywhere in his paintings. And I can see why. 
most situations are vastly improved by the addition of a pug. Hogarth himself was originally going to appear more formal in this painting. X-rays conducted by the Tate Gallery have unearthed some hidden facts about the origins of the artwork. At one point, Hogarth wore a fine wig and a formal coat for the occasion, but at some point, however, the decision was made to paint over that fashion choice and instead to go with the more informal dress that we can see here. Although Hogarth has shown himself being confined to the oval sphere of the canvas, there is still a lively look to his appearance. He gazes out from the picture plane and meets our look. His pug Trump, meanwhile, has interests elsewhere and instead looks neither at his owner nor at us. It is a rather melancholic expression that seems to cover his features. There are a couple more details I would like to bring your attention to within this painting. Firstly, note the thick curtain that runs between Trump the pug and the canvas of the artist. Which space does it occupy? It actually emerges from the oval self-portrait and then becomes part of the setting behind the pug. This could be suggesting that there is no division between the painted realm and the living, breathing, physical world, that certain truths exist and are linked between both. It could also be a pictorial tool to suggest the bond or link that is shared between the dog and its owner. The colour changes from the red of Hogarth's clothes into the subtle hues of the greens that we see here as the two spheres are connected. Also, let's take a look beneath the oval canvas. We can see that Hogarth's likeness is propped up by a set of books. The top one is Shakespeare. The addition of the books could be Hogarth's way of paying homage to the role that drama, tragedy and comedy have played in the creation of his artworks. If we think of Marriage a la Mode or A Rake's Progress, for example, we can recognise that there is plenty of drama, tragedy and comedy within those iconic artworks. And finally, on the palette here, we can see that the artist has signed his name and beneath his signature is the words, the line of beauty. So what does this phrase mean? Why is it here? Well, the line of beauty is a reference to Hogarth's theories about aesthetics. In 1753, eight years after this painting was completed, William Hogarth published his ideas about the nature of beauty and called it the analysis of beauty. He believed that beauty could be found in curved lines, not straight, and also that variety was a key element. That curved line that flows across the palette could be hinting at some of the theories that he was at that point working upon. William Hogarth was a successful and popular artist during his lifetime, but his voyage into the world of art theory was less well received and he was ridiculed by many for it. This caricature of 1753 by the artist Paul Sandby is an example of the feelings that many had for Hogarth following the publication of The Analysis of Beauty. This mischievous image is called Pug's Graces and it shows the artist William Hogarth surrounded by his theoretical graces. Females whose physical form is made up from the curved lines and the variety that Hogarth had celebrated in his publication. And take a look at how Sanbury has chosen to depict Hogarth. The artist bears the legs of one of his pugs. In many ways, Hogarth and his pugs are interlinked, both in the work that he created, but also in how the public perceived him. It led to how he is remembered today in sculptures and monuments. The painter and his pug is a fascinating image. Its composition is original, it is filled with symbolism, and it so clearly illustrates the affection Hogarth had for his dog. So that's it for this week. I really hope you've enjoyed taking a look at William Hogarth and his painting The Artist and His Pug. So next time we're going to be taking a look at the founding president of the RA, Sir Joshua Reynolds. I hope you can join me for that. 